We're talking chicken wings and beverages, so grab a plate. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris Hill. The old saying is that slow and steady wins the race, and that's how it was looking on Wall Street today. The new GDP numbers show an economy growing at 1.7% for the second quarter, nearly double what was expected, but still in that slow and steady category. Joining me in studio today, Jason Moser and Matt Argusinger. Guys, our top story, let's talk about the wings. Second quarter profits for Buffalo Wild Wings rose 41%. The restaurant company was helped by the fact that wholesale prices for chicken wings are down 15% from a year ago. All in all, a strong quarter. You had me at chicken wings and beverages, yeah. and I am in. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was actually a really great quarter for uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. We've always kind of been looking at this company as facing sort of these headwinds in what we you know, refer to as the chicken wing risk. And, and it's a funny term, but the reality of the situation, it does exist. Uh, in a nutshell, they buy chicken wings by the pound, but they would sell them by the quantity. And so in order to fix that lumpiness and that risk, what they've done now is they've adopted a new pricing model where they buy them by the pound and they sell them by the pound. And it was really, I think, I think we had you know, our fair share of skepticism maybe around here at Full HQ as, as to how well they would pull this off. But speaking from experience, Chris, the in-depth market research that I have performed, nice. it actually is going to work pretty well. I think they've done a good job communicating this. I think it's going to be successful. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. You know, when they come out with this strategy, this is the kind of thing that can go horribly wrong. I mean, this is affecting consumers directly. The communication is key. And it seems like yet another example of having that experience at the top with Sally Smith, the CEO, really matters. No doubt. I mean, this is always a big risk when a company does this. We've seen it, you know, do, been really badly, especially when you have customers who are, you know, so used to an experience and all of a sudden you just throw them a, a big curveball like this. But by all accounts, it's working. I mean, what Buffalo Wild Wings should be more worried about is the fact that there are less uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships on TV right now because yeah. apparently there were more last year, which made their sames for sales a little bit slower than expected. I, I like the fact that they're not blaming the weather like most retailers or restaurants, <laughs> and they're actually blaming sports on TV. But anyway, no, it was a great quarter all around, and certainly uh, the you know the top line, the bottom line showed it. Uh, when you look at the stock, though, it's had an amazing 2013 so far. You look at the bump up today, shares year to date up around 40 percent or so. Is it getting to be a little pricey? Uh, maybe a little bit pricey. I mean, it's a deserved valuation, I think, because the company's doing so well. Sally Smith is really running a great operation there. But yeah, I tend to stay away from buying stocks on big pops like today. Let things settle back down. 35, 36 times earnings. There are a lot of robust assumptions there. But again, I mean, it is a deserved multiple. This company is doing a lot of good things. And I'll tell you what, I cannot wait until I can bring you my next market research when I try out their new in-house game changer, Homebrew. It's going to be good stuff. We'll have to do some research. Let's get to the day's movers and shakers. SodaStream's second quarter profit rose 36%, and the company raised guidance as well. Looks, uh, on the face of it, as a strong quarter, but let's not forget, there was a big short interest in this stock. Oh, it was huge. About 46% or so of the, share, of the tradable shares of SodaStream were short going into the quarter, so they didn't really have to do a lot right. But they did do a lot right. I mean, they beat on the top and bottom line, raised expectations, as you said, for the for the second time this year, actually. And, you know, as we talked earlier, they're really winning the war of the kitchen counter space. You know, that's that's always been the big, you know, what the skeptics have always said, well, SodaStream, as soon as that fade, that, that fad passes, you know, it's going to end up in counters. You know, it's, it's not going to stay on the counter of most people in, in homes. But by all accounts, it, people love their SodaStream. Unit sales are up. The uh, soda flavor sales are up. It's becoming a part of the kitchen counter space, and that's huge for them. MasterCard's second quarter profit came in higher than expected. Consumer spending on its credit and debit cards rose nearly 12%. So thank you, consumers, I guess, is the message from MasterCard. Indeed. I mean, a great quarter, 15% top line revenue growth translated into 25% boost in earnings. The stock has had a little bit of a round trip today. Uh, earlier in the morning, there was a, a judgment release, which basically rescinded a judgment from earlier, uh, deeming that the fees that MasterCard and Visa may charge were not deemed harsh enough. I guess they're feeling like maybe they need to take a second look and really take a look at these fees because uh, it's, it's more or less an indefensible position for the retailers. This had a little bit of an effect on the stock earlier on. We saw it drop. Uh, but I think that, you know, as the day has progressed, people are realizing that between MasterCard and Visa, these are companies with just tremendous competitive advantages and moats. Uh, they are going to continue to do well, I think, for many years to come. Great companies, great thing to look at now. Earlier today, Facebook stock traded above $38 a share. That means it took the social network just 13 and a half months to get back to its IPO price. Uh, it was short-lived. 
falling later in the day. But uh, to be fair, this is a stock that recently has had a very nice run. Oh, it's huge. I mean, it was as low as, I think, $17 just uh, several months ago. So it's, it's been a big turnaround. You know, the results uh, last week were, were really good. I mean, you, you had, you know, monthly active users were up 21% to $1.15 billion. But the, the really compelling thing was that the daily active users was up much more. So that shows that, you know, even though um, the number of users is probably going to slow over time, they're using Facebook more. And that's huge for advertising. You know, their advertising revenue was up 61%. But mobile, as a part of that, went from 30% to 44%. So those are two really strong, compelling things happening for Facebook on the user side and on the advertising side. At the same time, you know, we're back to the IPO price, which means Facebook is once again a $90 billion company right. with a B. <sighs> can there be a lot more upside to this name? I'm not totally convinced. I'm, I'm not sure it can be a market beater from here. Shares of Herbalife up on the news that billionaire investor George Soros has bought shares through his fund management company. So uh, if you're scoring at home, we've got uh, billionaire George Soros on one side, billionaire Bill Ackman on the other side shorting the stock. What do you make of all this? I feel like anytime we ever talk about this stock, we need to start it with like sands through the hourglass because yeah. this is turning into its own soap opera. <laughs> I mean, you've got Ackman on the one side contesting that, you know, saying he's short. You've got Icon on the other saying he's long. And then you got Soros jumping in there on Icon sign saying he's long. I don't know if this is a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme or whatever they're claiming it is, but I'm going to tell you what. We've talked about this before. Investors should just avoid following the lead blindly of guys like this. They have a lot of money to throw around and they like generating headlines. It doesn't necessarily mean they're making the best investment decisions, so I would avoid it. That's going to do it for Wednesday. Let's look ahead to the rest of the week. What's the stock you got on your radar? Hey, Mercado Libre reports after hours tonight, you know, the eBay of Latin America. Uh, one a name I, I, I'm very interested in. It's recommended in two services I work on. It's had a heck of a run. I'm looking at revenue. I'm looking at uh, gross merchandise volume. If those stay strong. Stocks should move higher. Do you think there's an investor beat of Latin America? Uh, yeah, Mercado Investor. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Jason, what about you? Uh, Whole Foods, favorite grocery here at Full HQ. They have earnings coming out later. And uh, so, you know, this just the company continues to do so many things well. And there's this tremendous runway of growth for them to open new stores. And so paying attention to the all-important same-store sales and also looking at Whole Foods margins, because really that's one of the arguments for investing in this company, is that they're able to maintain consistently that higher margin structure. Uh, and then obviously great leadership in John Mackey. I expect big things, but we'll uh, have fun listening to the call and finding out. All right. For Jason Moser and Matt Argusinger, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. People on the show may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal